I literally feel like this is the secret. Like I have this secret that people don't know about. I just feel so lucky that we have decided to do this and that it's worked and that it has just made sleep so much better. I'm on Instagram like every day and I rarely talk about this even though I swear it is the secret to getting sleep. Hey guys, my name is Shayla. Welcome to my channel. If this is your first time here, I talk about pregnancy, I talk about motherhood. I do things pretty naturally, eco-friendly. If you're into that kind of stuff, please subscribe. I actually have a goal of hitting 100,000 subscribers. The goal was for January 2021 and I didn't hit it, but I'm of the belief of aim for 100,000, get to 95 instead of aiming for 90 and getting to 90. So here we are, still trying to get there. I'm making this video from our upstairs. We just moved to this house a couple months ago. We just finished this a couple weeks ago. So there's still like what, I don't know what you can see, but like tape measures and stuff in the back. We're just, we're just starting. Today's video, I really honestly have not wanted to make it. It is a little bit controversial. So what did I say? My title is how I got about 125 extra hours of sleep the first year of being a mom or whatever the title is that I come up with. When you do this, you get an extra 45 minutes a day of sleep and I believe it. So I'm gonna let you in on the secret and you're either gonna go, yep, or you're gonna go never in my life bed sharing. I swear bed sharing. There's so much I have to say about this and I'm going to do it as like rapid fire as I can. A lot of people refer to it as co-sleeping and I did forever. I was like, yeah, we co-sleep. Apparently that's different. Apparently co-sleeping and bed sharing are co-sleeping means that the baby's in the room with you, which is recommended for like the first year. Bed sharing is when the baby's in the bed with you. I actually looked up a bunch of stuff from La Leche League. They're like the gurus of breastfeeding and I looked up how to do it safely and kind of what I found was by not talking about it, people are still ending up bed sharing. Either they're tired or they just are like, you know, we're just gonna do it and then they don't do it safely. I'm gonna start by saying, you decide what's best for your family. I'm just gonna explain to you what we do, how we do our family. Every family has their own differences. I feel like a lot of people end up bed sharing. So I'm curious to know if you've always planned on it and you did it or like, then I like to know like, your whys and why they're sleeping where they're sleeping. Some people just choose like, I don't want my baby in my bed. I want that to be me and my partner's space. They have a spouse that works weird hours and you don't want your baby in the bed that someone else is getting in and out of a lot. Maybe your partner's a smoker. Okay, so I'm gonna go through all this. There are, they call them safe sleep seven, the seven rules to how you can bed share safely. Let me first tell you a really interesting facts. When you're a breastfeeding bed sharing mom, you and your baby's sleep cycles sync. So you go into deep, REM sleep and light sleep together. So you'll often find that when your baby wakes up, you're not crazy groggy. Also, there's something that happens in your brain when you're lying down and then you get up and then you lay back down, it like wakes you up more. So if you can stay down and just side nurse, you get more restful sleep. I read that they, were, and I feel this way, but it was funny to read. You'll often ask a bed sharing mom how many times their baby woke up in the middle of the night and they don't know. And I don't know. People will be like, how is she sleeping? I don't know, she wakes up. She probably wakes up twice a night at least. But I just like latch her back on and then we both fall back asleep. That's it. And that's why they say you get 45 more minutes of sleep because you don't have to get up, go get them. She doesn't even really get that upset because I'm just right there. We put her to bed in her on her floor bed. She sleeps on a floor bed. So we put her to bed there. And then she typically wakes up around like, I don't know, 10 or 11. And at that point I'm like, okay, I need to go to bed now. So it's kind of a nice like, Okay, bedtime, just grab her and then we go into our bed and we fall asleep and again, she'll wake up a couple times and I just feed her and we fall back asleep. The thing that I was most concerned about is when she started getting mobile. She's gonna wake up and crawl off the bed. When she wakes up, she'll sit up and then she'll just kind of like look around and I just wake up when she does that. I don't know, I just, you're just in tune. They say that Western cultures are not super set up for bed sharing. We've got really high beds. You do have to watch out for dad because dad does not have the same instincts that you do. So they call it the cuddle curl. You're basically a big spoon, right? So your arm is out, you got your knees up like this, and then your side laying. So your baby's just breastfeeding here and laying like this. Can't get up any higher here because your arm is there. And then you've made this like cove where dad can't roll into there or like pets or whatever can't get into there. I recently thought of doing like a mean girl long sleeve breastfeeding <laughs> shirt because sometimes I get cold and that's one of the safety things is you don't want to use big heavy blankets. Okay well then I'm basically just naked all night because my shirt is half off and 
I'm cold. So I was like, if I could just cut like a slit right in my boobs where I could just like have that be exposed, but everything else would be like covered and warm. <laughs> that might be nice. So there's seven rules to safe sleep and I'm just gonna go through them and you can decide if these things are right for you. Number one is that you're a non-smoker. Smoking apparently in the house in general, secondhand smoke can increase, increase SIDS. And I read somewhere that it has something to do with it interferes with the brain's ability for like lung function or breathing or something. You guys are pretty much face to face. You don't want to be breathing into your baby while they're sleeping. Yeah, so if you or dad are a smoker, this is probably not something that you should be doing. Second, you want to be sober. So, and I say sober because it's more than just alcohol. So you for sure don't want to be drinking alcohol because that can impair your ability to wake up. You don't want to be taking any sleeping pills or any sleep aids. Again, you or your partner. I said dad before. I mean partner. Anyone else that's in the bed to not be smokers and not be uh, taking sleeping aids or drinking. You want to be a breastfeeding mother. One of the reasons is because you just like have that innate sense with your baby with the breastfeeding and the bed sharing. But the other is is that your baby stays down by your boob instead of coming up by your head and like into the pillows and stuff. It's kind of like they always just gravitate to your boob so you know where they are. As I'm editing this, I'm realizing I forgot one of the things. You don't roll onto your baby the same way that you don't roll off your bed. You learn where the edge of the bed is, you learn where your baby is, as long as you're not smoking, you're sober, you're not taking sleeping pills and you're breastfeeding. And I remember hearing that and being like, ah, that kind of makes sense. In the West, like in the US, we're like, it's so dangerous. The world is like, what? You put your babies in like cages at night? It's just interesting to get a different perspective because of course we're like, no, that's a crib. That's what all the babies sleep in, no big deal. You sleep with your baby in a bed, what? I think it's just cool to look at other perspectives and just to be like, okay, why do you do that? Why do you use a crib? Well, because it's safe for them. No, no parent is putting their kid in a crib to be like, here's your cage. But it's like, I feel safe. I know that I can leave them and they're not gonna get hurt in this crib unless they crawl out of it. Most of the time when babies get used to cribs, they get more sleep. And so it's just like, every parent is operating from a place of love or from a place of necessity or from a place of trying to make things work. If you and your partner work strange hours, yeah, maybe they should have their own room. Or if you're like, no, I want my baby right by me all the time, there's no right answer. As long as you're doing everything out of love and you're doing the research that you need to do, I support you, ma. Number four, your baby is healthy and is full term. After four months, it's like, okay, you guys have got bed sharing down, you're good to go. But before four months, they're still so little and they might not have the right neck strength and different things like that. So even prior to four months, that's kind of where you're being more careful, especially if they're not healthy or if they're not full term, you might want to look into more things about bed sharing. Why we do it is because I feel like I do get way more sleep. It's just a nice way to connect with her like in the morning. It's the sweetest thing when she wakes up and she goes over to dad dad and she's like dad 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 dad. She gives him a kiss and he just and she like hugs him and it's it's so sweet. I love it. But Seth was on board and is still on board. If your partner is not on board then you have to figure out something else. Your baby sleeps on their back. This typically happens when you're breastfeeding or when you're bed sharing and breastfeeding because they'll be on their side while they're nursing and then when they fall asleep, they and sometimes Aaliyah will just go <laughs> and then she just lays on her back. But you wanna make sure that your baby's on their back and that they're not swaddled. Okay, number six is not swaddled so that they can move around if they need to. It's lightly dressed. You just don't want them to overheat because that can increase SIDS as well because now you've got your body heat. And then number seven is safe surface. So that means not on the sofa, not on the recliner. And that's what these articles said. They're like, a lot of times people are like, okay, I'm not going to sleep with my baby. And then they'll fall asleep on the sofa, which is more dangerous than the bed because there's so many places for baby to like fall into. It's just not, not where you want to do a co-sleeping situation. So no sofa, no recliner, your soft mattress. Adult Americans typically have soft mattresses. You want to make sure that it's not soft enough for them to like sink into you, so like a water bed or something where they're gonna fall and get really close and then not be able to get out. There's no like gaps between your bed and your headboard or your bed and the wall. If you can, put the mattress on the floor, that way if baby rolls off, it's not as far down. She always just slept in between Seth and I. When she wakes up, she doesn't just go crawling. She'll usually crawl to me or she'll crawl to Seth or I wake up right away. And then you don't wanna have anything like cords or like dangly things, like macrame things that they can get wrapped up in. And then no big comforters. So that's the other, probably most difficult thing is that you don't wanna have like a big comforter. You want a light sheet and you wanna keep it beneath them. So that was another tough part about 
um, having her between Seth and I, I basically just didn't have covers. I literally feel like this is the secret. Like I have this secret that people don't know about and they're like, my baby wakes up so often and I'm up in their room and da 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 and I'm like, whoa, I just feel so lucky that we have decided to do this and that it's worked and that it has just made sleep so much better. It's like this bonding experience, really love it. Kinda wanted to put it out there, but if you want more information, look up La Leche League and they have like tons of breastfeeding information, but they also have a lot of bed sharing information. That is how I get 45 extra minutes of sleep a night, which translates to like 275 hours in the first year, which is a lot. I hope this was helpful. Please subscribe so we can get to 100,000. Please like and comment and I'll see you next time. Mwah.